folks have had a friend from New York ask about how to get the workspace that I use here to appear on the screen. I am in Adobe uh, Creative Cloud version of Premiere Pro, so Adobe Premiere Pro CC. And this is uh, day after uh, summer, June 22nd, 2014, as I'm doing this video. So what I like to do, of course, is use the Editing 5.5 workspace. Because I'm kind of old school, and this is the layout that I'm used to seeing from those days. Now, when you open up Premiere Pro the first time you get it, it may look more like this, this editing version here, which is very similar. Some of the tools and stuff are over here. It's, it's just a little different look. Uh, you still have your effects and your audio track mixer and everything up here. So there may be a, a reason why you'd want to go this way than the other. It's very similar to what I do here. I'm just more comfortable with seeing it laid out sort of like this. And of course, all these windows are scalable. So you can click on your uh, various different things. Of course, nothing comes up in the beginning. Uh, in here, there's no sequence down here to start. And there's no, uh, you know, me or anything right here. But let's go ahead and get that fixed right quick. That My friend that has uh, asked me a question is doing a time lapse. So I'm going to double click in this window here, and I actually have some photos. I, I did a little time lapse earlier this day uh, that has some of my photos and all in it. Good gosh, there's a bunch of photos in here. How many? I can't even remember. Control A. Usually it shows you how many, but it's not showing me. There's a lot. <laughs> at any rate, here I am at the very end uh, looking at the camera. I'm going to delete that one. I don't really need that one. Say yes, and that's gone. So I'm going to import this as, a, as an image sequence. You see you have this button down here. And, it, and so Pr Premiere Pro knows to go and get all these uh, photos and make them an image sequence. In the old days, I thought you had to select every one of these. But it turns out all you have to do is select the first one. You select the first one. And then if you click on image sequence, then Premiere Pro CC knows to get all the rest of them. They're inside this folder and make an image sequence out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and say open. And you can see here right quick that I have now an image sequence, and it's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So that's like a 4K image sequence. Uh, I want to make a, a uh, time lapse, but I don't really want to use, I don't want to make a 4K time lapse, I don't think, today. I could make a 4K time lapse, sadly, because that's a lot of pixels. Really, 1920 by 1080 is what we usually are going to do, right? Still, that's sort of, at this point, the, the uh, established high def that we all use. So I'm going to make a new sequence here. I'm going to say, I want to just right clicked in there. I'm going to say new sequence. And I'm going to, you can see here, I started, I thought about doing this. I'm not going to do it. You can pick red RD3 and you can see you have some 4K sequences in here. And you can see here it's 4096 by 2304. So you've got plenty of extra pixels. You could actually make a nice 4K sequence. I'm just not going to do that tonight. I'm going to close all this up. I'm going to go back to what I typically use, which is what YouTube likes a lot. It's ABC HD. I'm going to do a 1080p, and I guess I'll do this, let's do this 24 frames per second, just for heck of it, really uh, <clears throat> 30 is probably probably would use the most, but I kind of want to, well, you know what, let's go ahead and do 30, what the heck, and I'll call this time lapse, backyard, okay, so uh, here we go, uh, see, I'm, I've got audio track up here. I don't, I don't use this very often. There's not really an audio track with this. I'm going to click on Source. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece of video. Now, this is this video is the sequence. And you can see that it is, what is this, uh, 29 seconds long. That's if, if, if each one is one frame each. So let's pull it down. It's just video. There's no audio in there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I could hit change sequence settings that would turn it into a 4K or very large, maybe even larger piece of video. But I'm going to say keep existing settings because then it's going to stay a uh, 1080p piece of video. But now, as you can see here, all I'm getting is a very small portion of the field. I So I've, I've got a huge amount of, of pixels outside the frame of this window, right? They go way up here, way around the sides and all that. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to effects control up here. And I'm going to twirl this down, and I'm going to tell it to scale. Probably it's about 50%. Oh, it's more than, yeah, about 50% should work, right? I'm going to go exactly 50%. What the heck? I just typed that in there. Now, I've got some pixels above and below, so I'm going to go to this 540 here and pull it up a little. That shows what's down below. There's my little walkway. Ah, I kind of think I like this right here. We'll be able to see that maybe the clouds change. There's my antenna sticking off the top. Let's frame it up about like that. I'm just I'm just uh, 
getting over here and holding across and then clicking, uh, you know, left clicking and pulling up and down until I get my walk. I could also go over here and go left and right if I wanted to, right? But I think that's pretty good. There's going to be my time lapse. So I think now I'm probably ready to render this time lapse out. If you want it, I can click on this and we'll, we'll see how it looks. So here we can see, see the clouds moving a little bit. We didn't have a whole lot of uh, cloud movement. But, you know, if, if it had been maybe a storm or something blowing through, we'd be able to see a much more dramatic sort of effect here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and render this out. I'm going to save, first of all, so I don't lose anything. Now, so hopefully, folks, this you've seen kind of how you can find you. This is going to be uh, for my friend who's having trouble figuring out exactly how to get his screen looking like mine. Once again, it should be, now he's using a Mac version, I'm using PC, should be editing. CS 5.5 and then it's a matter of whichever of these things you click on up here as to what you uh, are going to see you can get metadata all kinds of different things but source that says no clips here right now if I were to double click on that it would show up in there though you see so there he is you can see the shadows moving a little bit when you double click on it it shows up over here in the source and then you've got your this is your program this is what shows what's down here this 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 window here is this down here and this window here is whatever you double clicked on over here so this equals this this equals this and vice versa so if I go ahead and render this out now we'll have us a nice uh, time lapse and it'll play a little smoother because it's hard for this thing to the computer to resolve all these pixels so I'm going to go ahead and export this I, the way you do that of course you click on this window down here you don't want to be clicked. I guess you can click over here and render out also. You don't want to be clicked over here. You'll be clicked in here somewhere because this has your edits. Say file, export media. And since I made 30 frames per second, I guess that's what I'm going to stay with. 2997 is 30 frames per second. Progressive. Now YouTube blocks my high on the uh, profile here. And I've got what coming kind of makes a second too. I want much more than that. Let's give this at least 14 frames per right, second. Let's, let's give this 18 megs per second, right? And 24. It's gonna that's gonna render out, I think, really well. I'm gonna use maximum render quality as well. I kind of want it to, uh, you know, really do well. No effects or anything needed. This video audio. There's really no audio. And what I could do here, I could put a piece of audio underneath this. For the heck of it, right now though, let's just go ahead and stay with what we've got. So we're only going to have a 17 second clip. Let's export. It's going to take a little bit of time. Make sure I'm going to the right place. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to go down to garden time lapse. Nope, wrong place, aren't I? Time lapse backyard. Here we go. So this is where I want us to go. I'll say save and export. And it's going to take a little while to do it. But Premiere does goes pretty quick. Now I have a um, Core i7, I guess third generation Core i7, and it's a pretty stout processor. I have 32 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to hush for a minute and let them just going to probably speed this up so we can see the end result. So now we should have that. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, folder that it's in. Hang on, I'm doing it kind of offline here. So now we have it. Uh, time lapse backyard, 85 megs. Let's see how this looks. So now we can see a uh, nice time lapse. I know that Snagit, which is what I'm using here, is only getting this 10 frames per second, but it actually turned out pretty decent. And hoping there might be an animal or something walk through the yard, but I guess there's not. Thought maybe one of the cats would have come through. Oh, we got a lot of clouds changing. But there we go. Pretty nice time lapse. And done with photos, sized to down, in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So, folks, that's the way I do it. And hopefully, you'll go and shoot something a lot more interesting, maybe, than that. <laughs> but there you go. Time lapse uh, done easily in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Peace. Thanks for watching.